We're live in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey for JCW Wrestling. This is Coach Kevin with Damage 365 Radio. I am with former WWE Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion Val Venus. Val, welcome to JCW and welcome to New Jersey. Thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Now, as a guy who's been uh, around the wrestling business a long time, almost two decades now, you, you were saying last night? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been going about 25 years now. 25? 22 years. Oh, so there you go. Um, who was your biggest influence to get into the business that long ago? Uh, you know, I've loved this since I was a kid. And there were a lot of different people that I watched. You know, Macho Man was one. Um, you know, you go back to, obviously, Ric Flair. Ric Flair was always a big, uh, big influence on me. Um, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, you know, I loved his work. Uh, of course, as I started to get into it, there was... Uh, uh, Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning, uh, he was always one of my favorites as well. So I really liked the guys that you know originally went for the IC title. That that to me was the title I always wanted to go after. You know what I mean? And it was, well, the belt back then was very prestigious. Very. Prestigious. It wasn't tossed around like it kind of is now. Right. Exactly. I mean, I mean, you named some like beasts, technical legends. No, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, some of them aren't around anymore to, for us still to appreciate. But. Um, yeah, I mean, the Intercontinental belt back then was, that was, if you weren't Hogan, you wanted to be the Intercontinental oh, yeah. Heavyweight Champion. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, the Intercontinental title to me was held by some phenomenal wrestlers. Like, guys that could actually go out there and perform at a really high level on a constant basis. You know, so that, to me, the IC title meant a lot back then, a lot. A real, like, a whole lot to me. I just hope nowadays that uh, some of these wrestlers understand and like how important that title is. You know, now with the U.S. title and thank, thank goodness it kind of got rid of the World Heavyweight Championship title. It, it kind of made the importance of the Intercontinental Belt rise again, and they kind of went back to the old style one too. So I mean, I know you had the you had the oval one, but I wasn't a fan of that one. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you just came a little bit late. Yeah, yeah, a little bit late. <laughs> I mean, but you were part of pretty much the. Uh, most wrestling fans will say the most exciting Vince McMahon would probably say the most profitable era of wrestling the Attitude Era now you watch wrestling these days you still see it what do you think why, why did it work then but it probably won't work now you know, it's one of those things where, and to tell you the truth, I really don't watch it a whole lot today. Um, and it's, it's nothing against the guys that are wrestling. It's just I have so many other things on the go, and I'm, I'm really, really busy all the time. It's just hard for me to sit down and really watch anything. And when I do, I generally tend to watch UFC. Um, I think when we go back to the Attitude Era, uh, I think you had a point in time where, you know, a lot of people still had jobs. A lot of, of course, when you have jobs, everybody has bosses. Uh, you know, of course, everybody wants to be able to tell their boss off you can't do that in the real world and I think people lived life vicariously through WWE because we had a lot of talent that on screen were giving the finger to their bosses basically and, and of course we were pushing the envelope with sexual innuendos um, you know just, let's face it Steve Austin you know 30 years ago would have been a dead it would have been a dead ringer for a straight up heel but he takes that same character into the late 90s, early 2000s, and a heel character is actually a baby face. When I came out, I was originally supposed to be a heel. The guy that the girl, the girls are supposed to love, but their boyfriends and husbands are supposed to hate. It didn't work out that way. The girls loved it, and the guys loved it too. You know, so it's uh, it was a weird, it was a weird time. Uh, it was a time that you know we took advantage of what was happening in the wrestling industry, and we ran with it. And of course, on top of that, you had the competition factor. Our competition makes everything better. We had WCW breathing down our necks, and they were beating us for a lot of weeks. And so everybody had to be on their A game. Everybody was pushing the envelope. You know, it was it was an exciting time in professional wrestling. I think competition is a major factor in, in in wrestling really being elevated to the, the heights that it reached during the Attitude Era. You know, competition definitely made the Attitude Era what it was. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I wasn't one of the fans that um, I kind of like picked and chose when I wanted to watch wrestling during the Attitude Era. Um, I'm a guy who was born in the mid-70s, so I like the Golden Era, and I kind of skipped right over the Attitude Era and started watching it again, like, seriously, like, three years ago, but you can't take away from that era. I mean, the guys like Stone Cold, like you mentioned, Rock, Triple H, uh, even uh, Shawn Michaels, they, they were doing things that, you know, people were like, whoa, you can't do that on national television. Right. Now... 
you know, they went now. I'm, I'm finally, they got it at a PG era, and they kind of got they're getting a little bit more serious, you know. So maybe they're starting to like not really bring it back to sing, as, as as heavy, but like filter in a little uh, things once in a while that'll make you go, oh, did she just say that, or did he just say that? Because it worked. It absolutely worked. And you can't tell me that a 16 year old or a 15 year old fan then was different than a 15 year old fan now. Right. It's still 15 years old, so you can't say that. Oh, we got to make it a family show, but you know it doesn't it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, you told him about all the talent. I mean, WCW um, eventually merged with ECW and WWE. A whole bunch of guys, uh, a lot of them co former co-workers of yours, just got released from WWE, including your tag team partner from last night, Kurt Hawkins. Um, like, how does that make you feel to know that the day before he's released, and the next day, boom, you're in the ring tagging up with him? Oh, it was great. You know, I've, I met Kurt a long time ago in WWE. I mean, he was back down in developmental back then, you know, and uh, he was coming up through the ranks. So I, I didn't know him real well, you know, but I, I met him, and he was always a really cool guy and stuff. Uh, so to actually come and step into the ring with him and, and have him as my tag team partner was phenomenal. Uh, he's still a young guy. He's like 29 years old. You know, so a release to him, I mean, I don't think it's too much, too much of a big deal. He's still got an opportunity to go back there at some point. I think the indie circuit may be really good for him, uh, both uh, for his career in terms of learning new things that he probably wouldn't have learned if he had stayed up in w, uh, WWE. Uh, it's also going to be a growing experience for him as well. Uh, so I think, you know, if the opportunity comes around where he does have the opportunity to go back to WWE, he'll come back there with a lot more life experience and, uh, and use that to his advantage going forward in the future. So you, in your opinion, you feel that being not used properly in WWE or underused and then being let go is probably better off for him now than being staying there and not being used right. Yeah, and the other factor is, I mean, he's a phenomenal talent. You know, and WWE is not the only place to go. You know, you can make a phenomenal career for yourself in Japan, and I think he's Japanese material. Absolutely, I think he can do very well in Japan. I think it's an opportunity for him to go over there, uh, and you know, I know he's got some connections over there, and I think that would be a phenomenal avenue for him. Uh, I know a lot of guys coming out of Japan, like uh, you got Machine Gunka, um, you got uh, Prince Devet, you got a lot of guys that have made really successful careers with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I mean, it's a phenomenal territory. Uh, it's a place to learn, it's a place to grow, and it, it, once you get settled into Japan, you could always say, hey, I don't really feel like going back to WWE. I like working over here. There's a lot of guys that do that. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely, he's got a lot of opportunities in front of him, and I think it's going to be really good for him going forward. For your fans, how can they reach you on social network? <laughs> That's if they want to. Follow me if you dare. They can reach me at Val of Venus, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, T as in Tom. It's kind of short for entertainment. So it's at Val Venus, E N T. Just be forewarned. I do. Uh, I send out some stuff that's quite shocking to some normal it people. It can't be worse than Al Snow. Al Snow's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, and to tell you the truth, a lot of people don't know this. I'm going to say, you know, about 50% of the jokes that we would come up with for my for my little bit in WWE, 50% of those were because of Al Snow. You know, he was he was my go-to guy when I couldn't figure something out. You know, if I couldn't put together a good joke for the day, Al Snow's the guy I'd go and look for. I mean, we had the pleasure of sitting uh, next to him at Legends of the Ring, and he was one of our interviews. Uh, I think we asked two questions, and it was pretty much 14 minutes of comedy hour with Al Snow. I, I walked out in my ribs killing me because I couldn't stop laughing. Oh, yeah, Al's, Al's hilarious. I'll tell you what. Al's one intelligent dude. He's he's quick witted. He's got you know his his brain works flawlessly. I mean he's just spot on with everything he says, everything he does. I mean he's just absolutely hilarious. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot with this last question because I, I didn't warn you about this one. Best brain in the business. Best brain in the business. I'm gonna have to say. When he's clean, when he's sober, Jake the Snake Roberts. Absolutely. We had a pleasure interviewing him. He was just, uh, right before Hall of Fame induction and two days after he got uh, the announcement. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. 
Yeah. I agree with that. But uh, I do appreciate your time. Uh, good luck after this. I know you're going to Staten Island for Warriors of Wrestling after this. Sure, uh, yeah. Damage 365 goes to all their shows. Unfortunately, I can't split myself in half today, so yeah. I had to pick the, the local yeah. the local one. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Val Venus, former Intercontinental Champion for Damage 365 Radio.